Hey guys, it's your friction here, Tiger Tank 1 2, however you don't call me, I don't really care. And today we are taking a look at the T28 HTC, one of the reward vehicles that uh, you can get in the personal mission category. Actually, right here, the campaign. This is actually the second tank that you can get once you finish all the missions or the missions to get the Stuck 4, the Stuck 4, the Stuck 4, <laughs> excuse me. And uh, once you get this vehicle, you can go over to the T28 concept and from the T28 concept you're going to go over to the T55A and then to the object 260. And since we have already made a video about the Stuck 4, we're going to make a video about the T28 concept because as I promised I would make um, a video about all the, pre uh, the, not the premium, well there are premium vehicles but they don't make premium credits, of all the personal mission tanks that you can get that means i'm going to cover the t28 htc in this video then i'm going to cover the t55a in a separate video and after that i'm going to cover the object 260 in a separate video sometime down the line and uh, i promised that quite a long time ago uh, and i think it's definitely time to uh, fulfill that promise because obviously next year or actually still in this year at the end of 2018 they want to introduce the personal mission set 2 well they will be adding four new vehicles that you can unlock by uh, completing those missions and thus they're going to give us more premium vehicles that we can unlock which you can train your crew in you know just have crazy battles in and um show off the tanks that not everyone has because this vehicle let's face it okay this was pretty easy to get but let's face it the object 260 not everyone owns the object 260 not everyone owns the t55a they are kind of novelty vehicles and um, that's exactly why the why people want to get them and i think uh, it is also kind of a inspiration to um, to a lot of people to play the game to have something to have a goal to get a vehicle that you cannot just get by grinding to get um, you know by having to complete certain objectives and that's exactly what i had in in mind when i was playing these campaigns um, these different missions i really wanted to get the object 260 because it's a very very cool vehicle now after i've gotten it um i do have kind of a different opinion now uh it's not a bad opinion it's just kind of um it's still a great tank but the novelty kind of wears off once you get it but that's just me saying that so enough of that let's jump right into the t28 htc the first thing you can see you know by just looking at this thing is that obviously it's a prototype version of the t28 instead of the uh the big large and long um t28 that we have with uh, the gun in the front you know and a different kind of design this vehicle looks very 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 different it has kind of a, a gun mantlet that goes all around the tank and that gives you, I think, a gun arc of, I'm not even sure, gun arc of 30 degrees on both sides, so 6 degrees in total. And it's really weird looking, It's I think it's a, a super cool looking tank because it's just so weird. And we can actually just take a look at the vehicle details and look at the backstory of this tank tank destroyer t28 concept the development of this heavy breakthrough tank began in september 1943 it was planned to utilize certain components of the m6 tank as well as the electromechanical transmission and 105 millimeter t5 gun mounted in a third of limited traverse with a 203 millimeter armor protection the vehicle was intended to assault the fortification of the german secret line known as the west wall to the Germans, the U.S. landed forces rejected. The U.S. land forces rejected the project during the design phase. The vehicle was later modified into a T95 heavy breakthrough tank. So, this tank was actually, uh, I think they kind of built it. The M6 was actually built um, at 1943. Like historically speaking, if we take a look at that time period, it's like the turning tide of the war. Soviet Russia, 1943 September, is already pushing back the Germans, I think, through um, Belarus and uh, out of out of Russia, like mainland Russia into into Belarus and the Ukraine. I think, no, I'm not entirely sure, but I think definitely 
Stalingrad has happened, um, the 6th army under General Paulus has been destroyed or encircled completely and that was a huge strike against the Germans, that was pretty much the turning tide of the war. The Americans have landed in Sicily and Italy, like um, they are marching towards Rome, the uh, Italian government has already fallen down, Mussolini has retreated back into the Alps, you know. He was um, captured by the Italians because they changed sides and they changed, um, you know, their alliances. Um, but he managed to flee by the help of the Germans. And Northern Italy now is under control of the Germans um, and is being harassed. Like the local population, as anywhere the Germans went in World War Two, the local population um, was harassed by the Germans. Uh, there were lootings, uh, murders and all kind of war crimes committed. And now, at this point of the war, the Soviets, like, this is shortly before they have the, um, the uh, meetup between Churchill, Stalin, and Roosevelt, who is still alive. 1944, he died, and uh, Truman took over. No, I think 1945, 1944, I think. Um, and they are having a discussion in Malta, on the island, in the middle of the Mediterranean, where the... Germans have been pushed out. The Italians are no longer in um, Western Africa. Uh, no longer are the Germans in Africa. Rommel is back on ground in Europe and is commander in chief of the northern uh, defenses of the Atlantic in France. And now they are talking about the invasion plans um, of D Day. Actually, the Soviets really need a second front to alleviate. Uh, alleviate um, the stress that they have, the constant assaulting on their eastern front, and thus the planning of uh, D-Day begins. So, yeah, that was a very, very long kind of um, historical um, recounting of the of 1943, at the end at least. And uh, what they needed back then was, obviously, the Siegfried line is between France and Germany. That line was uh, extended in the uh, 30s. Um, the, the Germans obviously had built that thing, I think, uh, previously after World War One or before World War One even. I'm not even sure. Um, and no, actually, what they were, it was built in the in the 30s, and uh, it was the equivalent of the Maginot line of the French in you know the eastern part of France, where they kind of ignored the northern part of Belgium, where they didn't put anything there. Um, and yeah. So they needed a vehicle to break through the line of the Germans. And because that, that line was going to be heavily fortified, 203 millimeters of frontal armor was needed. So let's take a look at the statistics of this vehicle, and then we're going to compare it to similar tanks that um, at this tier have similar kind of outlooks. So first of all, we're going to go take a look at the 105 millimeter gun that this tank has. And what you can see is it is a tier 7 105mm gun um, that has a rate of fire of 6 rounds per minute, average penetration of 181mm uh, with standard AP rounds, 320 average damage, a dispersion of 0 0.4, at least I think I a little bit better because of a better crew on it. The um, gun traverse speed is 19.2 degrees per second and the gun depression angles are very very bad with minus 4.4 degrees um, downwards you know gun depression and 15 degrees of gun elevation now gun elevation is kind of surprising since uh, the gun is compared in this in this um, you know this gun mantle right here I wouldn't believe that this tank was able to put that gun up very high but somehow it manages to do that. And you can see it right here where the gun is kind of um, uh, able to, to lift up. And it does have quite a bit of room. So I, I guess you can turn the gun upwards. 15 degrees of gun elevation is nothing too crazy. But for this tank, I think it's decent. Uh, minus 4.4 degrees of gun depression. Now, obviously, this tank is not stationed very high. Um, its profile is not very big. Uh... But I'd say, you know, this tank is definitely not going to be a hill warrior. Don't worry, <laughs> uh, shouldn't be a hill warrior in this vehicle at all. So the aim time is 2.16 seconds. With the dispersion coupled, it's actually not too bad. Um, it's not the most accurate tank, but it's also not the worst. 
it's a tank destroyer that actually should be a little bit closer to engagement to be able to do a lot of damage especially if we compare it to the um, Yak Panther which I've just unlocked and gotten into my garage this tank has a 0 0.32 um, accuracy at 100 meters so the dispersion is a lot better on the Yak Panther with even with like a horrible crew so yeah but now the main ingredient of this tank which comes coupled with the gun is obviously the armor and this tank has 880 hit points that is the standard amount of hit points that you have in a tier 7 tank and it has 203 millimeters of frontal armor 101 on the side and 50 on the rear now this tank was meant to break through um, a heavily fortified line a heavy fortified position so that means that obviously the front part of this vehicle needs to be very heavily, you know, strengthened. Now the hundred and now the problem with this tank is just that there is nothing that really protects your gun mantlet. The gun mantlet right here. This is a hundred and uh, two hundred and three millimeters thick, right? The gun mantlet at the front is rounded so it's kind of difficult to penetrate it but at the same time once you kind of turn your gun a little bit to the right or left because it's not the fixed kind of gun mantlet because this entire thing right here is the gun mantlet people will be able to penetrate you as if it was your side armor that you're kind of presenting so once this tank is getting surrounded or just you know frontally engaged by several vehicles from several kind of angles like from here and from here you are in a very very tough position at the same time those machine gun ports as you guys know world of tanks those machine gun ports in the rear kind of fuck you over as well because obviously they are not very strongly armored and they are kind of flat as well they look really cool though and people will be able to penetrate them the lower plate obviously is the thickest part of the tank this plate up here with the angle is very difficult to penetrate but at tier 9, since you'll be facing tier 9 vehicles as well, since it's a tier 7 tank that doesn't have any premium um, preferential matchmaking, they will be able to penetrate you without a problem. So the, the problem right now is that this, this tank that is supposed to have great amount of armor doesn't really have the amount of armor that is needed for the job. At least, I mean, historically speaking, I think the armor would have sufficed. But now in the game, like speaking in, in terms of the game, this armor is not going to be good enough to get you through certain tiers of matchmaking, especially if you're too close to combat. The, the closer you are, the easier it gets to penetrate your tank. The problem is just you don't have the best accuracy to fire from long ranges, so you're kind of stuck in a very awkward position in the middle where you should you know, not be too close if you're playing against tier 8s and tier 9s but if you're playing against tier 7s and tier 6 vehicles you should you know be in the fight but at the same time even those tanks can penetrate those weak spots if they know where to shoot them and if they have like APCR loaded you're gonna have a bad time 880 hit points not that great and the armor values are just kind of awkward I'd say it's it's like suited for tier 7 matchmaking tier 6 matchmaking it really is this kind of um, push through tank, but as soon as you hit tier eight, mm, it's gonna be very difficult tank to, you know, skillfully play without having the issue of not being, you know, not re having the reliable armor to protect you from the incoming onslaught of fire. Now, the other problem that you're gonna be facing with is that the traverse speed and the top speed of this vehicle are not that crazy. The top speed for a vehicle of this size and weight, 29 kilometers going forwards, is actually not too bad. If you compare it to the T30, I uh, know the T95, I think the T95 is not as fast. Um, but still, it does provide better armor. Now that coupled with the kind of lack of survivability, lack of armor is going to make things very difficult for you, especially if you're too close to the, to the enemies. But still, like concealment wise at least, uh, it's decently concealed, it's nothing too special, it's not on level on the E25 or anything like that because it's a rather large vehicle. But you're not supposed to be completely hidden all the time, you're supposed to be kind of breaking through some parts, um, especially if you're in tier 7 engagement. So, if we compare this vehicle now to three other tanks that have kind of similar 
similar um, kind of uh, not positions but I'd say tasks now we're gonna take a look at the SC100 and we're obviously going to fully upgrade all of the tanks that we're gonna pitch this tank up against we're gonna have the AT7 as well because this is the tier 7 British tank destroyer that has a lot of armor and it's very similar to the T28 HC. And what you can see right now, the very first thing is that the armament that you have on the T28 uh, T28 HTC is the biggest caliber of all the four. But it is also lacking the second worst penetration. The SU-100 M1 has a 100mm gun that has 212mm of penetration. The AT-7 has 226mm of penetration with the 17-pounder gun, I think. So obviously you're going to be lagging behind on pen if you're going to go up against tier 9 tanks and tier 8 tanks. What you'll have to do is you'll have to resort to premium ammunition on some vehicles. And that's not too crazy. Rate of fire obviously is not as great as well. Um, both the AT-15 the AT7 uh, almost have the double of that. The AT15 has more than double of the uh, rate of fire than the T28 has. Obviously, since the T28 has the highest caliber gun, um, but still, you can see that the, the gun traverse also is kind of slow in direct comparison to the others. And um, the big difference is that all of these tanks have very, very different gun mantlets. The AT15. I think the gun mantle is most similar to the T28 HTC. If it turns to the side, it's easily able to be penetrated. But the SU100M1 has a very, very small, um, you know, gun mantle. But that also shows you that it has very, very limited kind of turret or gun uh, traverse. The AT7, you cannot really penetrate the gun mantle because it's just that that tiny. At the same time, the traverse is also smaller, so you're going to be having a bigger kind of view set that is uh, also a bonus in certain situations. But it can be such a big backdrop, and you'll see what I mean in the gameplay afterwards. Then, the gun depression angles, it doesn't have the same kind of gun depression as the other vehicles. Uh, it's not the worst, the SU100M1 is the worst in that category, but still 4 degrees, 4.4 degrees is just not that crazy. Um, but at least 15 degrees of gun elevation, at least that's good. And you can see here the gun traverse limits, it has the best um, gun traverse uh, of all the vehicles, at least uh, not speed, but still gun traverse in, all, in total, and aim time is also not that bad. Dispersion, on the other hand, is pretty much just as bad as the SU-100M1, and we know that that vehicle is supposed to be a close range fighter now. So, the survivability here, Obviously, AT7 has the best kind of armor all around, with one weak spot on the top. That weak spot, obviously, is the main attraction for everyone to shoot at, but that thing does very, very well in World of Tanks right now. Uh, the 1815, also a very, very heavily armored vehicle at tier 7. No one really can penetrate it. Yeah, you can. You have the gun, uh, the, the cupola on top, that is the one big weak spot that you can really penetrate. The side armor is even thicker. Uh, than the front armor of the SC100M1, but still the T28 just has so many weak spots that it doesn't really play in the same league as these three vehicles. So yeah, concealment wise, obviously I don't own the other tanks, I actually own the T1815, I've owned all of them, but concealment wise the T28 HTC is the best because of the best screw on it. So, I know I have painted a very kind of bleak outset for this tank, but Basically speaking, it is a smaller T28 at tier 7. Is that a bad thing? I think not. It's a very novel vehicle. It's a novelty of a tank. And you'll see what I mean in the gameplay that I'll just put in any second now. Because obviously I think premium tanks should not be the best tanks in the game. I think they should be a little bit worse, but they should have something special. And this tank has something special in its kind of design. It's not the best tank, no. Is it worth going through all the missions? I think definitely yes, it's a free tank. But it's not the best vehicle. It's just not as competitive as the AT7 is, for example. It's, I know it's faster, but it's not as competitive right now. So I'd say we jump right into a game. And I'll show you guys what this tank is capable of. And where the weak spots of this tank really lie. So, as always, I've prepared two games for you that we're going to watch. 
and the first one is the ideal kind of scenario for this tank. Pretty much the ideal scenario for any tier 7 vehicle. You're top tier, you're facing some tier 6 vehicles, quite a bunch of tier 5s, and only one or two, three tier 7 counterparts. So, what is it about this tank that uh, makes it so attractive at tier 7 and 6? Well, basically, you have a little dumbed down T28. I don't mean it in a kind of offensive way, I love my T28 nothing against the T28. It's a, a lighter version of the T28 pretty much that is faster and that is just as well armored in some of the spots, not all of it or else it would be kind of too strong and that makes it very very competitive at tier 6 and 7 and this is the perfect matchup for a tank like this. We're playing on the map Lakeville, you have the big lake in the middle and if somebody actually would have been able to spot the other side from the middle over here uh, from my team, we would have been able to do quite a lot of damage, which you will see later on in the match. Now, what do these lights, these tier 6, 7 matches and 5 matches do have in common? A lot of these people don't have a lot of experience, right? That makes this tank very powerful because they don't see them a lot. They... Uh, because people don't want to play this tank since it's going to meet tier 9s as well as tier 8s. And, well, obviously, they don't have the experience of knowing where they should go on the map and so, you know, during, at certain times. What we can see right here is I'm just running freely through the middle of the map because I know at this tier, they can really only be dangerous to me if they have my side or rear armor. Now I'm taking a huge risk here, right? So I'm moving into the entire part of the middle all by myself in a tank destroyer that has a great gun arc, but not the craziest gun. Um, well, okay, it's decent gun handling, but not the best uh, rated fire. But still, a 105mm gun at this tier is very very deadly against those tier 5s and tier 6 tanks and it will hurt still on those tier 7 vehicles. Most definitely you will not be needing that much gold on this vehicle if you're playing against tier 7 vehicles because let's face it it's a premium that is lacking the most important kind of aspect of a premium vehicle and that is generating double the amount of credits that a normal vehicle does. I kind of missed that, and that should definitely be um, talked about in the second iteration of personal mission um, of the second part, where they should uh, add more, at least I think they should add us, give us the opportunity to make the premium amount of uh, credits. So, first contact, we have two tier 5, no, one tier 5, one tier 6 tank, the SC100 is completely obvi oblivious to my existence until I put a round into him and you can see two shots, 700, 700 damage dealt and one of them being at 1 HP. This is not a lot of fun for these people. Like those small tanks cannot do anything against me. The S100 obviously is going to face, uh, well, he's down. So is the T67 with 1 HP left. We take out the artillery and now we are kind of um, in a spot where you can shoot the guys in the back and we've dealt 1219 damage now most of the damage you'll deal with this tank mostly comes in very weird parts because either like you're you're fast for a tank destroyer with this kind of armor out set this weight and uh, the looks of it like a t28 you're kind of fast to be honest t 29 kilometers per hour is, is not too bad um, but most of the damage you'll be dealing will be in some engagements that you'll have like at the very beginning or at the end of the match because during the middle the problem is just that this tank doesn't really get around fast enough like a, a heavy tank would or a medium tank would but you'll still reach the, the battlefield so you might still be able to do some damage and especially at this tier, as you can see right here, they still have like the highest tiers alive. They can still do some damage, they can inflict some damage on your team nonetheless. So if you can like get into those matchups and, and you know get those matches where the, the matches are a bit the games are a bit longer than usual, 
Well, you can still do quite a decent amount of damage in this tank, especially at tier 7. You can see we're ro running around here. We're um, engaging now the OI, and at this range, with uh, 181 millimeters of pen, well, you don't really have to aim for the weak spots anymore, especially if the OI is giving you solid armor. And this is exactly like the strong the strength of this tank with its like gun arc when you can get the gun arc around the corner, which is like super crazy. No other vehicle in the game without a turret is able to do something like this. Because look at look at how I'm able to press the side of this um, of this tank right here, turn it around, and immediately be able to shoot the guy if if uh, he would still be alive. And thus ends a game where it did 2,660 damage in a tier 7 vehicle. This is the ideal, or this was the ideal kind of uh, situation for this tank. Now let's jump into a game where it's not as ideal anymore. Let's see how it ends up there. This was the first game that I had in this tank after not playing it for, I think, about one and a half years, or even longer. And what you can see is that the matchup has definitely changed. We are now the bottom of the tier, tier 7s. And we are playing against tier 8 vehicles. And I want you guys to keep in mind that we're facing two Lorraine tanks. One SGR VS-1, uh, a Defender, and a T-92. So the average penetration of these guys is about 220. All counted together, I'd say. The SGR VS-1 has, I think, 270 millimeters of pen. Something crazy like that. The Lorraine is 230 and the object, like the Defender, 230 something as well. And the T92 is like the lowest one with 171 or something like that. And I want you guys to remember that we are playing a tank destroyer that is not the slowest but not the fastest either. Um, but once you're in a position, it's going to be very difficult to change the position, right? So you can see immediately my team is like making the age-old mistake of leaving one complete entire flank open to the enemy. And now we are in a situation where we have to hold off the tanks of, uh, you know, going after us. And I knew exactly that there were going to be two Lorraine tanks coming down this line if we are like unlucky defenders coming down here as well. And you can see both of our tier 8 medium tanks, the Pershing and the T-34-3, both are in the 2, kind of realize that they're going to be screwed if they stick around here. So they're going to go back down the south into a, a spot where they can stay hold down, I think, but it doesn't really work out for them. Yeah, well, you'll see it eventually. So I'm in a tough spot right now. I cannot run anymore, right? Because I cannot turn my tank around and run away. I'm not fast enough. They will catch me. So what does this game offer me? Well, I can try to uh, hold off their their um, their push. I can do that, or I can try to you know move back a little bit. I decide to stay in this position and use my armor to my advantage. But as I already mentioned, armor on this tank is kind of uh, a difficult thing because it has. A bit uh, a lot of weak spots a lot of weak spots that everyone kind of knows by this time at least at this tier people do know where to shoot you and with 232 millimeters of penetration they can penetrate your lower plate without a problem since that lower plate is not angled it is basically a flat surface so our first shot goes into the strv s1 and you can see we can still do some decent amount of damage to these guys and um you can see that this Lorraine 40T exactly knows, he knows where to shoot me, he shoots the, uh, the side turret right there. I'm trying to wiggle my tank, um, he puts another shell into that uh, weak spot right there, and we put another round into the T20. But you can see that this game is going to be over very, very quickly. Now, the armor does hold up, as long as you can hide those weak spots, it does really hold up. But as soon as somebody gets these weak spots and, and knows where to shoot you, well, you're basically toast. We still managed to bounce 1480 uh, HP worth of damage against 1 T28 HTC, 1 T20 and 2 Lorraine 40Ts. And basically what I'm saying is the armor is good, but it's not good enough. 
especially against these tier 8s. If you find yourself in such a situation where you have to hold off several vehicles at once, uh, you're going to be having a very, very tough time. As you could see, I was having right there. But still, we managed to do 1,026 damage. I think that's not too bad. We didn't use any premium ammunition. We got 698 HP worth of um, spotting damage. But it just shows you that there are limitations to this vehicle. And thus, I think I, I do understand why some people are not too um, keen about this tank because it's it's really special in its design it's very special in its way of uh, play but it's not the crazy uh reward tank that you're you've been looking for it's not that yet it's a very very decent tank um it's a lot of fun to play at least for me it's a good crew trainer and i think it definitely is worth your grind if you're looking for something like that if you're looking for a tank that is really you know, going to be the craziest thing and you've seen it in game and you're thinking like this is going to be the next uh, 87 for the Americans. Well, I have to disappoint you. It's not that, but it's definitely a good tank and very balanced at the moment. Now, what does balance this tank as well is artillery. So if you're in a tier 6 and tier 7 game and uh, as we have seen previously the other matchup and you're facing um, such kind of odds, you're not probably going to have a great game as great of a game as i did because people will be able to shoot you at some point they will fire apcr they will fire premium rounds and artillery does really ner really annoy this tank so yeah what kind of verdict would i put on this vehicle well i'd say it's a it's a good tank it's worth going for it but I don't see myself driving this tank 24 seven to train my crew. Uh, it's a nice crew trainer. Um, if you like don't have any other, I, I don't think there are any other American premium tank destroyers, right? I think it's the only real trainer that we have for the crew, but still, um, I like the tank. Um, it does what it's set out to do and it has the flaws that it should have. And uh, yeah, that's, I think what you can say about this vehicle. It's great it's nice to play it's easy to take out if you know where to shoot at it and uh, it's very annoying if you are in a tier 6 or 7 vehicle because it can go into positions and just annoy the heck out of you um, especially if you have to like storm several different uh, tank destroyers that are hiding in the back and yeah I hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did as always like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one